Okay, we can start, I think. Yeah, yeah we can start. So, thank you guys for joining in. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so, we are going to be showing you the the uh, the walkthrough of, you know, the Biconomy technology, what we have built, you know, and how you can use, you know, Biconomy solution in your application. We are going to give a live demo also. Uh, so, we have made a sample uh, DAP. We are going to show you how you can, you know, integrate Biconomy in that application uh, using multiple approaches we have. So uh, I guess uh, Amal and Aniket already uh, have talked about the Biconomy as a company, what we are doing. Uh, I'll just, you know, uh, go through quickly, quickly about uh, Biconomy. So, so our, our, our main, you know, focus is to make the next generation technology very simple to use. So we believe like blockchain is uh, definitely a next generation technology, but the only problem is right now, it's not very simple to use. I mean, uh, it has, you know, the capability to, you know, to change how we interact with the application today, how we own uh, some digital assets today, uh, but it's not very simple to use uh, when it comes down to the mainstream user, you know, using these applications. So uh, our first focus, you know, uh, our first uh, uh, like solution is around this blockchain technology and we are just trying to make it simpler simple to use in an easy way yeah you can see so yeah. we can move ahead Sarah, next. yeah so uh, in today's uh, presentation me and Sarun will be doing the presentation so uh, a quick intro about me i'm the co-founder and cto at biconomy uh, been in crypto for around two and a half years now. So earlier I was in uh, companies like Samsung, make my trip in India, but then eventually I came uh, around this blockchain technology in late 2017, you know, went through Ethereum white paper, Bitcoin white paper, and found it really interesting. And then, you know, started playing around the technology. And then when I realized the full potential of this technology, I, you know, quit my full-time job at the make my trip and uh, eventually, uh, uh, started doing some freelancing around you know blockchain projects and then uh, met one of met two of uh, founders and Kit and Ahmed in a blockchain event in Bangalore uh, in 2018 and you know that's how we started by Con. Yeah, so hi, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Tarun. I basically handle backend infrastructure at Biconomy, majorly related to layer engine infrastructure and security related stuff. So I've been in the space. Like last three years and previously i was working on a social key recovery protocol and like while developing that protocol i met aniket who is one of the co-founders at biconomy and you know our thought process aligned like to solve uh, ux related problems first if, if we really want mass adoption so yeah since then i've been with biconomy yeah cool let's proceed let's proceed Okay, so this is the problem slide. So, uh, you know, when we, uh, when we think about the problem we face while building these applications. So you see the, on, 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 on the right side of the screen, you can see the already solved problem. Uh, if you are trying to build a Web3 application. So, you, you, you know, if you need a node, there are solution providers like Infura, Alchemy, uh, if you need servers, there are Amazon, uh, the, the Google Cloud, the DigitalOcean. If you need wallets, there are multiple wallets provided out there. Portmatic, Ethereum, Portis, MetaMask, uh, which you guys you know must be using. Uh, Fiat on-ramp solutions are out there. Data APIs, analytics solutions are already out there. Uh, Dune Analytics, you know, tenderly provide these services. But when you see the transaction management and relay infrastructure, there's not there's like no specific, you know, uh, service that is totally focusing on these problems, you know. So we are trying to solve these unsolved UX problems that, you know, uh, a DAP developer today is facing. So let's say with all the solved uh, solutions, you make a DAP. Now when you launch it in the market and users and, you know, like allow your users to use it, so, you know, that's where the problem comes. User is not able to use your DAP so easily. I mean, uh, when you see these Web2 app, Web apps, they are, you know, pretty easy to use, but that's not the case with Web3 app. So we are trying to solve these 
mm, problems you know uh, while building our application yeah uh coming to the solution so broadly you know to talk about the solution we are uh, providing the solution in the form of an sdk and apis so either you can you know integrate our sdk or you can use our apis so one of our apis is out few apis are still in progress we'll you know uh, soon release them uh so we so you know how, talking about the solution so we have made our layer uh, infrastructure that is scalable that is secure uh, so like so being a developer you don't have to create a relayer network on your own and you know uh, when it comes to the integration it hardly takes a day to integrate the solution that would actually save the cost and time uh, of the developers so co by cost i mean you don't have to you know set up these uh, nodes that are totally focusing on relaying your transactions and you know that that are doing the gas management part that are doing the transaction ordering stuff so all these things pyconmy has already done and obviously you will save time you know you don't you won't have to spend the time building these solutions you can just plug and play the pyconmy's uh, solution and you know you can totally focus on building your application and like no maintenance is needed from your side uh, like we are doing it uh, we are doing all the you know tedious work at the back end so you guys don't have to do it uh, on your by yourself and uh, like when you talk about the scalability like uh, you don't have to worry about the scalability because we have you know we we have made our system scalable in a sense like we have multiple relayers and so even if a lot of transaction come into our system so our system is dynamically scalable so on the run uh, i mean during the run time it can automatically add more relayers you know fund them as as if the system sees you know a huge uh, amount of transactions are coming into the system so that's how you know we made uh, the system so you don't have to worry about the scalability and like you don't have to worry about security because you don't have to manage these relayers so, so we are managing them so i mean that's the solution we are providing so we'll we'll talk about it uh, in the in the coming sections yeah uh so yeah i mean these are the points which i have like like already mentioned the the gasless transaction you get the transaction management you get you know by transaction management i mean uh, let's say you have sent a transaction uh, on the network but but that is not getting included in the block you know it might be uh, due to low low gas price or you know or maybe out of order transaction so we are taking care of that even if uh, it is due to a low gas price we will you know bump up the gas price and we'll eventually make sure that the, your, that your transaction you know gets included in a block and uh, coming to the gas optimization so that is actually critical when it comes to you know providing a relayer uh, service because uh, it's easy to you know set a higher gas gas price and let your transaction included in a block quickly but that is at the expense of higher gas price i mean it doesn't have to be that much higher i mean you just have to find the right balance you know you just have to find the right gas price so that your transaction gets just included in the block also and i mean it's not as high uh, so on that part you will save the gas uh, also so we are doing that stuff so so that you don't have you you guys don't have to do that and we are providing a dashboard also for developers so that um, you can manage uh, in different configuration around your dapps you can see the analytics uh, 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 around the usage of your application so the dash the analytics part is not live yet but we are working on that it will be out soon uh, we have the scalable and smart relay engine i already talked about that blockchain agnostic part so we have like built the infrastructure uh, to be blockchain agnostic so right now we are supporting ethereum we are supporting matic network and we are you know uh, in talks with other blockchain to support those also like tezos you know rsk so those will be included eventually but we have started with ethereum and matic network uh, 
its web and mobile support is there you can use our sdk uh, on web and mobile both support for web3 wallets so uh, by economy sdk is compatible with almost uh, almost every web3 wallet out there so you can actually easily integrate by economy with the existing wallet which you must be using in your application uh, so yeah let's go ahead okay so i mean we talked about the developer experience we talked about the problem a developer faces let's see it from the point of view of end user now so if you see the left side of the screen without bypass me you can see these are the steps a user have to go through when you know user uses your application he needs to create a wallet he needs to manage these uh, seed and private keys and then when it comes to interact thing with your application so the user realizes like okay i need gas to pay for the transaction fees and then he goes to an exchange and then if it's a new user first time user it you know takes around 2 3 2 3 days to you know to your kyc on exchange get some ether or if you all if you fortunately if you have some you know crypto friend you can ask them uh, with some ether uh, but again this is a very like lengthy process you you just you get ether you know you transfer that ether to your wallet uh, which is uh, in, in your dapp and then you you know gets to use your dapp and that to every time you interact with the dapp you have to pay the transaction fees so that is very painful when it comes to the end user experience so this is definitely not the experience we want when we see uh, when we you know foresee the mass adoption of the blockchain when we see like the mainstream user using the applications built on blockchain so you know with that uh, vision uh, like if on the right side if you see with biconomy i mean the experience would be similar to a web2 application on every interaction you don't have to you know pay the transaction fees so uh, i mean we, you you will see when we you know show you the demo you will see the difference in the experience yeah okay now talking about the solution talking about the approaches uh, in which you can do the meta transaction so right now we are we are supporting two approaches uh, one is the contract based accounts second is the native meta transaction so we'll you know uh, show you the demo using both approaches and you will see like what the difference um, is like in, uh, between both approaches so let me explain one by one by using a diagram can you yeah. move ahead sir okay so this is a contract based account architecture so here the main point is every user that comes on your application a uh, a smart contract wallet is deployed for that user and user uh, the the client wallet account like if you are using metamask so the metamask address would be the owner of that smart contract wallet and user have to store store all the ether all the funds all the digital assets in that uh, smart contract wallet so that's the main point here you know once he comes on the dapp he log in into the dapp in case of a new user a new smart contract wallet is created in case of an existing user i mean just login happens and like no deployment happens so i mean but, so if you see this architecture uh, like we have it it assumes the login part is already done uh, the user contract wallet is already there so let me explain you these three components which you are seeing on the screen the one on the top left side of the screen is the user interface of the app it is simple like user has a wallet he has the zero balance account over there the bottom component is the biconomy relayer infrastructure and the top right component is the blockchain component on the blockchain you can see uh, like uh, three smart contracts over there one is the biconomy relay hub smart contract which biconomy has deployed on each blockchain each supported blockchain this is second one is the user contract wallet so this is uh, again like deployed for every new user uh, and you and the the user is the owner of that contract wallet and last one is the uh, contract uh, the dapp smart contract okay so if we see the flow user uh, come on the dapp he do a interaction so instead of signing the transaction directly to the blockchain he just sign the transaction data 
along with the signature and the data he sent to the Biconomy infrastructure, uh, the off-chain Biconomy relayers, where the one of the Biconomy relayers would eventually, you know, uh, create a blockchain transaction, wrap the uh, the actual transaction which user sent uh, in that uh, new transaction, you know, sign that transaction and send send to the blockchain, and then eventually pay the transaction fee. So here, uh, Bicon, one of the Biconomy relayers will actually pay the transaction fee. And the transaction will first go to the Biconomy Relay Hub smart contract, where on-chain signature verification will happen. So signature verification is required. So Biconomy does not alter any transaction data while relaying that transaction. So after signature verification, the transaction goes to the user contract wallet, and then finally lands onto the uh, DAP smart contract. So why we, you know, have taken this approach? Uh, is because of because, uh, is to solve the message dot sender problem. Okay, so if you have a DAP, if you have a smart contract that depends on message dot sender property, uh, and if we directly you know relay the transaction from one of our relayers to your smart contract, the message dot sender would be our relay address, uh, so in which is not desirable. So you know we are taking this route. So that the message dot sender on your smart contract would be the user's contract wallet address, which the user already owns. You know, so that's how this solve the message dot sender property. Yeah, yeah. In in addition to what Sachin said, so let's say uh, you know you have some existing DAP and uh, you are deploying this contract wallet for each user. So although Biconomy is deploying this contract, but uh, user have full control over its wallet. So if, if somebody is having some tokens, uh, X amount of tokens in that contract wallet, uh, by economy cannot you know, really uh, withdraw it or do anything without user signature. So it is already in the contract itself, right? Sachin? That's right. And every time it has to be a new signature uh, because we have the replay protection mechanism in the smart contract itself. Yeah, yeah. so our contract wallet is like a nuns based system, just like an Ethereum normal account. So every every different signature has different nuns. Yeah. So let's move to the second approach. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I mean, this looks much uh, simpler than the previous one. It's because it actually is simple uh, than the contract wallet approach. So here, no smart contract wallet uh, is involved, uh, but the, the main point here is that you have to make your smart contract, the DAP smart contract, native meta transaction enabled. So by native meta transaction, I mean uh, your smart contract should not rely on the message dot standard or the message dot value property. So if it is independent of these property and you have written any any business logic in your smart contract then that means you your smart contract is native meta transaction enabled and you can use this native meta transaction approach to uh, deploy the meta transactions in your application and the flow is quite quite simple as you can see the user comes on the user interface he initiates a transaction instead of sending that direct transaction directly to blockchain he signs uh, a piece of uh, he signs all the transaction parameters sent to the Biconomy option relayers. One of the Biconomy relayers signs a uh, actual blockchain transaction, uh, you know, and uh, wrap those uh, in initial transaction in that, pay the transaction fee, and directly call the uh, DAP smart contract. So I mean, if if the logic does not depend on message or sender, it doesn't matter who is actually sign who is actually sending that transaction right so you know that's how this uh, this approach is quite simple to use but it involves some changes in your smart contract so you know that's the uh, difference yeah so so let's say you are a new developer and you know you are developing it for the first time so like we suggest to you know go for the native meta transaction uh, approach because it involves like more optimization like you don't need to deploy any contract wallet for each user. So if you have existing DAP and you know there are already users on that, then you can go for contract wallet approach because then you don't need to change anything in your current DAP. Yeah, and, and using this approach, you can keep the 
you, you can keep the funds you can keep all the digital assets in your client wallet address so yeah yeah that's also the advantage of this approach uh, okay let's move ahead yeah cool so let's go to the documentation walkthrough i mean oh, sure. the theoretical part is done <laughs> let's move to the more practical part so uh, i mean uh, the introduction section uh, i have already covered the problem we are solving by by con me how do we do it two approaches are there contract based and native meta transaction approach right so go straight ahead to getting started uh, okay so uh, this is the bicon me integration is actually a two step process first step is uh, you go to a dashboard you create an account there uh, you register your dapp you upload your smart contracts uh, you select the methods in your smart contract on which you want to enable meta transaction you select the approach uh, whether it has to go with contract wallet approach or whether it should use the native meta transaction approach then once that that's done you you know uh, go to your client side code you integrate by conmi sdk and then like yeah so yeah sachin so like before before going forward uh, i think we we can show to everyone like how to enable native meta transaction first in the smart contract and like how easy it is so should i you can explain about this meta transaction standard okay okay so uh, remember when i said like in native meta transaction you have to get rid of the message dot sender dependency and the message dot value dependency so how does you how you know uh, do you do it so we have made a, a meta transaction standard uh, repository here this is a public repository you can go on the github and check it out so this is actually to help the developers to enable the native meta transaction in their smart contract and uh, like these uh, these contract also takes care of the signature verification on chain and the replay protection so integration is actually quite simple so we have made a set of smart contracts uh, one uh, one is the eip 712 uh, meta transaction contract so this uh, this is a made uh, so this is created uh, considering the eip 712 standard so when we are taking the signature user signature so the data has to be in the eip 712 format so it actually you know makes it easy uh, makes it easy for uh, user to see what actually he user is signing and this way we can you know include all the transaction data in in the signature so that even the bicon me while relaying the transaction cannot change any data right 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 so i would you know suggest you to check the eip 712 standard also uh, but I, I, now yeah coming back to the uh, enabling uh, native meta transaction so uh, can you can you go back yeah yeah just open the test contract yeah. so here you know uh, if you see this test contract very simple contract just to uh, property one is the code a string public code second one is the address public owner and we have a one read function get code it just you know return the code and the owner of that code and one write function set code uh, so if if these contracts were not you know used uh, here uh, on line number 13 you would have seen like owner is equal to message dot sender here so you know but we we want to get rid of message dot sender because we uh, want to enable native meta transaction so what do we do uh, we inherit this eip 712 meta transaction contract we pass a few some parameters to it this is the first one is the name you can give any name but you have to make sure on your client code you give the same name while getting the signature from the user second uh, constructor argument is a version so again any version you can give you have to uh, keep the version same in your client code we'll see once we you know show you the code client code and you know on line number 13 instead of message dot sender we have just replaced it with message sender method uh, 
that that is already present in eip 712 meta transaction contract so you know that's how you enable native meta transaction in your contracts uh yeah, yeah. i mean that, that's it uh you can i mean these are public contracts you can actually make changes in them also as per your need uh but this is a basic uh, one we have made so it's easy for you to you know proceed uh in okay. and focus yeah. on that. i think i can show the demo also like uh, the integrated dapp which integrates native meta transaction first and after that we'll go to the code and just you know integrate by conning right sure sure, sure. so so th this is like a simple uh, application in which you can just set your quote and like the other method is you can get the quote so right now as it is clearly visible like somebody has set this quote to set quote and the owner of the address is this so if i want to you know let's say i'll say web3 is awesome So this is like EIP uh, 712 signature in which I can clearly see the message and after signing, it will just relay the transaction. So yeah, it is on Robston right now. So it will take some time to confirm. And after that, this message will be replaced by this. But three is awesome. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the main part is the user balance here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you see like my current address is one second, sorry, as this, and uh, I have zero ETH in it. So still I'll be able to, you know, uh, relay the transaction using Bygonomy. It'll get confirmed in some time. Uh, yeah, that's just in Robston. Yeah. Uh, confirming the transaction yeah did you did you refresh the page Sorry. yeah i refreshed the page yeah it is updated so it is web3 is awesome and it is saying like you are the owner of the code so you can play with this simple application and just see like how easy it is so uh like before going forward, I would like to also, you know, go through the dashboard first and we'll try to, you know, create a application on the dashboard. And after that, we'll look into the client side code yeah. in which, you know, how we are interacting with the by economy backend infrastructure. Okay. Just log out and like start from beginning. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's like uh, you can register or you know, if you have an already account, even just simply log in. And after that, there's an option like register a new DAP. So let's say set app and it's on Robston. So I'll create this DAP. So after that, there are like a couple of options here. Uh, so if you see this configuration part, it's like uh, you uh, you can restrict like number of you know uh, website restriction like who can uh, interact with this application, who can interact with your. So let's say you want to restrict only your domain or maybe some subdomains you can add here easily. And other than that, uh, this this is your API key, which is very much necessary to interact with the application and this is the dap id which is correspond to this single dap and there is a section actions in which you know you can customize different limits on your dap so let's say you want to enable some limit on this particular dap uh, you say like 0.5 i'll show you so you say like 0.5 ether on this dap you want to enable this limit so our system you know will keep checking this limit on every single uh, transaction on your dap and if you reach that limit it will just show the error like you cannot go forward right and other than that you can customize the limit on user level also so let's say you have a, any dap and you want uh, some custom limit 
on per users like any user can spend up to this much amount on the staff so you can also customize that from here and there's another limit is per api per api simply means i i'll, I'll uh, like create apis first and after that you can understand like what is this api limit so i'll add the contract of my you know dab here so it is asking for name and enter any custom name here so for the smart contract address i have my contract address here And for the EBI also, and you can simply add the contract here. After you just added the contract, uh, there's an option called Manage APIs. So if you go into that, you have this <coughs> smart contract and setting. Uh, also explain like uh, this this execute meta transaction thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you go back to the meta transactions? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, uh, in this DAP, we have made our uh, smart contract native meta transaction enabled. So, once we do that, uh, so let's say now we now we want to you know interact with the DAP's uh, DAP's methods. So, if we directly call, uh, can you show the the test contract? Sure, sure, sure. Contract. Yeah. So here we have you know changed the message dot sender with message sender method. So if we directly call the set code function here, uh, the the message sender method would not work that way because remember in case of native meta transaction, by one of the biconomy relayers directly calls this method. So you know if you directly call this method message sender method would still be the uh, relayer's address and not the actual user's address you know so in order for that to work uh, we have one method in eip 712 meta transaction contract can we move to that Tavi? yeah so every time you uh, interact with your application this you one you have to call a single function uh, which is the execute meta transaction it takes the user address as a parameter. User address is the uh, same user address which user has in the client wallet. So if you're using MetaMask, this would be the MetaMask address. Second argument is the function signature. So this this is the argument that would that would uh, you know uh, tell the tell the smart contract which function it needs to call on your DAP smart contract. So if we are we are calling the set quote method of our of our DAP. So in the function signature, the set quote method function signature would go in here, and the rest of the parameters are signature, the the R S and B part of the user signature, you know, to verify the uh, to verify that transaction is actually coming from the user address and not from anyone else. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the reason we have to call this method instead of you know directly calling your smart contract. But eventually, your, your smart contract method would be called using this. So we'll see how. So, so in this case, let's say we are executing this execute meta transaction function. So the function would be set code, right? Yes, uh, yes. Function signature would be of set code. Yeah. So yeah. So here I'll select this method. Like these are the methods which can populate in the method field. So you can select this and you can name it like anything. And make sure you check out this little box because it will tell our backend servers that you are interacting with the native meta transaction. So, so this, yeah. this the, whatever demo we are showing now, this is on the native meta transaction approach. So every action is based on that approach only. Right, 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 right. So basically, yeah, I just save it. And after that, like what I'm saying here, uh, what I'm seeing here is like I can, you know, customize like which are the methods in my DAP uh, in which I want to enable meta transactions on. So that's why we have, you know, separate out this thing. You can easily manage your different API methods. And if you go back here and see this, so now you can, you know, easily manage also API limit. So let's say you want to uh, restrict 
like per API element, uh, you can also edit it here. So yeah, like the dashboard thing is completed and let's, you know, go to the client side code. Yeah. So uh, right now, like, uh, although we have this, you know, contract deployed on Robston and it has meta transaction enabled, but uh, I haven't uh, integrated any relayer to, you know, relay my transactions. So let me show you like, what is the experience if I won't integrate any uh, relayer and uh, still, you know, I, I want to co call this method and interact with this application. So I'll just run this app. And after that, we'll go like to each functions and understand. <laughs> Somebody, I think, changed it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'll just try to, you know, change this code. So it is asking for the signature, just like you have seen before. But I don't have any funds in my account. So it'll, you know, say this, like in Biconomy is not integrated in this application. Yeah, it's, it's like Biconomy is not integrated. So I'll just, you know, after this, I'll just show you like how easy it is to integrate Biconomy and you can see the difference. So, yeah, so I'm not able to, you know, uh, set any code. So now if I need to integrate Biconomy before doing that, let's understand, understand like what are the, some of the functions written here. So uh, like, first of all, we are initializing our, you know, provider. So, and, so and this, sir, just, just to give some context in this. So this yeah. application is made in react. Uh, so all these like use effect function, these are provided by React. Uh, just to mention this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 This application is yeah, uh, developed in react. Yes. So yeah, th these are the couple of functions. The fir first thing is like, we need to, you know, initialize our provider so right now like uh, we are using it in browser so it's like the three injected so you can you know check for like if metamask is there and you can also check for the network also so right now we are providing this provider here in web3 and after that we are just initializing like with uh, what is the selected address and just set it here, set it here. and uh, when when i press submit this uh, method invokes and you know takes the nuns to avoid replay protection and this uh, selected address and after that uh, the set code method of the test contract and and after you know getting these three things uh, oh, yeah. but, but just to interrupt here like uh, oh, oh, yeah participants ask on the chat you know why we are only registering the execute meta transaction method on the dashboard so okay. because, because the, the actual function which you want to execute is being passed as a function parameter here you know, on line number 84 if you see the function signature so we are getting the set code function signature so eventually this function only will be called so you know that's how the functions information is getting passed to the that execute meta transaction function yeah go on. Yeah. right right i hope like it answered the question so uh, yeah, after getting these three parameters, we'll just you know it's like an on encoding method for having e EIP seven one two signatures, and we'll just uh, get the it sign type v four signatures here. And once we have this signatures, uh, we can just call send transaction method in which we'll pass this function signature. And if you remember, like on the contract itself, we need like this user address and function signature with these three parameters. Yeah. And and they, like this is like the standard method of you know getting this uh, RLP signature RSV parameters. And after that, this is uh, a simple read call in which you can get uh, the code from the network. 
and this is the main method like uh, which is sending the transaction so in which you can easily you know call the method so let's let's try to integrate by economy and like follow the documentation and see yeah. cool yeah so if i go here like this is our sdk and i just need to install it Uh, and just so uh, you know, guys, uh, uh, this uh, this is the way we are installing Maxa using npm. So if you don't have uh, npm, uh, you know, project, you can also use this standalone JavaScript file also using the script tag. Also, you can enable. And yeah. below is the uh, the the format in, uh, in which you will enable the economy. So I mean, the process is same. Just the uh, you know. Uh, format is different so you can check out this also yeah so the sdk is installed uh after that it is saying i just need to import and initialize mexa so i'll just import it and for the initialization I'll just replace like whatever is my current provider with the Pyconomy provider. So I'm initializing my provider here. So I'll replace this line with this. And I'll pass the provider here. And for the DAP ID, we can go to dashboard. So this is my API key. This is my DAP ID. Right. And yeah, we, we just, you know, after that, it is saying initialize your DAP after Mexa initialization. So it simply means like whatever, you know, you, if you want to, you know, get address from the MetaMask, you just listen for the Biconomy uh, ready event. And after like Biconomy is successfully initialized, you just paste that code into this ready event. So this is the code I want to execute under the Biconomy event. So whatever initialization code you have, just put it inside the, uh, by dot ready event block. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I have successfully done it. And 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 if you are like using Web three JS, so by economy is like super compatible with Web three JS. So you don't need to do any single change in the code. So wherever you are using Web three, it will automatically pick up uh, by economy. So let's try to run now. Wow. <laughs> nice. So a file to us, web three is create. But I'll ask for my signature. After that, yeah, transaction is being sent. So once it is confirmed, it is like automatically picked up here. So yeah, that's how you easily you can, you know, just replace your provider with the by economy provider and uh, you can easily integrate. So I have like this quick summary points. 
for for specifically for the native meta transactions so just you know first of all you, you know create a smart contract and after that you have to enable this native meta transaction in your smart contract and you can follow that uh, uh, meta transaction standard repository and after that you just deploy uh, your contract on whichever network you want with the address and its abi on the economy dashboard uh, and and after that just enable like meta transaction like manage your API, uh, go to the manage, manage api section and enable which are the specific methods you want to enable meta transactions on and after that just change your web3 provider to economy provider with the api key and app id on the dashboard yeah and uh, can you go back to the demo uh, like the web browser uh, Okay. Okay. This is uh, reflected. No, the 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 GitHub repository, the smart contract, test smart contract. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The test contract. So I uh, just want to you know mention here, like uh, here we on, in the set code method we just you know used message dot sender and we just uh, use the functionality provided by EIP seven one two meta transaction, right? So if you don't want to you know rely on some external contract. you can also uh, you know do all the signature verification and the uh, uh, replay attack protection you can do right there in the set code method you know you can modify it uh, as per your need uh, but and in, in that case on the dashboard then you would register this set code method only if you are you know doing everything on your own and you're not relying on external contracts uh, so yeah i mean just wanted to mention that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so it's totally up to you i mean we have provided a easy way to do it but you can always uh, like modify it as per your needs yeah yeah it's just that like if you don't want to do you know any custom changes you can just easily inherit yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, like uh, sachin are you showing like yeah yeah now uh, okay this was the native meta transaction approach now let me show you how you can enable meta transaction uh using the contract wallet approach in the same project okay so that way you will understand the difference between the, both the approaches so let me share my screen now okay 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 cool can you see it yeah so this is the same uh, project which tarun uh, showed and uh, just now uh, in, in this uh, project uh, again the user does not have any ether if i try to you know do any interaction it it will ask for the uh, it will ask me to you know send the transaction and uh, pay the transaction fee which i you know obviously don't have so i will reject this uh, and you know just to uh, mention the point here i have not enabled the native meta transaction now in this contract let me show you how the contract looks like uh, this is not the project this is the one mm. so this is the source contract this is my test contract and this is like like very basic contract i have not used the message sender method here i have not uh, inherited any external contract method so this is my simple contract which is deployed uh, and i'm using this okay uh, i am just trying to call the set code method uh, when i click this function it ask me to pay the transaction to pay the transaction fee now let's see how uh, we can enable uh, the the contract wallet approach in this so let me also you know follow the documentation for you guys uh, go to this icon near sdk uh, so the the dashboard part is same uh, which tarun has just shown uh, this is my uh, demo app 
scroll down view tab this is the same for you see the apis only the execute meta transaction is here right now uh okay let's go to the docs first i will need to install maxa this we're just you know uh, trying to show from scratch here so you guys know each and every step uh, during bicon integration so these these two contracts i'm not using here Uh, let it install. Meanwhile, let's go to the next step. So these these are the next step. Let me import by economy. So this is my contract code and this is my client code. App dot share. So very simple code here. The same which you just saw, like initializing the app, checking the. Uh, network version initializing web3 uh, reading from the network on submit i'm just you know as you can see i'm just calling the set code method here and transaction hash and confirmation showing the uh, messages this is the read method get code from network and like very basic app so while this is being installed let me uh, Performs the steps. I have imported by economy. Now I need to initialize by economy. So I will do it where I am initializing my Web3 provider. Okay. So here I write this. I don't need this line now. And in the Web3 provider, the existing provider which I'm using, in this case, uh, this is the provider, the window.ethereum. Let me replace these uh, DAP ID and API key from the dashboard. This is the API key. Okay. This is the DAP ID. So the npm install is taking time here. Okay, let it install. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh if we uh if we see the the contract wallet approach here uh you know the the diagram which i shown you in the starting so this would involve this contract wallet address now so in this app we would have to you know uh, add a login method here now in this case uh, so that a user can log in if it's a first time user the contract wallet would be created uh let me you know add some code uh, for that so in the ui let me enable this piece of code this is just a login button i'm providing and it's executing on login a method now on login what do we write okay this we can uh, refer the documentation dashboard like the user login let's come to the user login part okay so here you can see skip this section if you are using native meta transaction because user login was not needed in case of native but we are using the contract wallet approach now this is a login api it has two two section when you use a third party wallet it's like you are using uh, metamask you are, you are using portis portmatic or ethereum uh, other any other wallets so this is the code which you will you know use both approaches are there you can use the callbacks you can use the promises I would go with the promises. Let me copy this and let me just paste here in the on login method. So here I would need to give the user address, which in my case is the selected address variable here. And once I uh, do the login, so here this is a section which uh, will tell me, okay, this is a first time user. A contract wallet is being created for the user. So I would want to show similar message to my users. 
show the custom message. This is my custom function which I made to show the custom message. Your contract wallet is being created. Please wait. Okay. Uh, and if I come in this if section, that means it is already an existing user. So in that case, I would uh, just show login successful. Okay, uh, I hope the income install is complete. Uh, cool. Uh, now, now let's follow the documentation. So this part is done. Uh, login, login part is done. So, and this is the section when you implement your own wallet. Like if someone has implemented their own wallet, they could. Uh, that means they have the they have access to the user's private key. So in that case, you can you can you know follow this piece of code uh, for the user login part. We'll skip that. Now let's come to this contract wallet confirmation part. So now when uh, when this if section is will be would be executed, it said like please wait for the confirmation. So when will be how will we get the confirmation? So this is the way we'll get the confirmation. Let me copy this. Uh, now. Uh, Okay, I have not initialized. Uh, I have not uh, written the Bitcoin initialization code there. Let me go copy this. I mean, Tarun already shown this. So whatever, whatever we are doing uh, in the initialization, we would write it here. That is done. Now we would want to get the smart contract wallet deployment confirmation. So I go to this section, contract wallet confirmation, copy this code, paste it here where I have the Biconomy variable on event login confirmation, user contract wallet address this. So this is, this might not work right now. We'll update the documentation. I'll tell you how to get the user contract wallet address. So here it means like the user contract wallet has been created. Let me, okay. So you can actually use by me get user contract function. You just pass the, the message address here. This will give you the user contract wallet address. Let me console log here. User contract wallet address is the contract address. And we can also show you the some success message like uh, uh, contract wallet creation successful. Okay, as you can see, like I have to do a lot more work than the native meta transaction approach, but you know, uh, that's how it is. Uh, that's why we, yeah. I think you need to add like async in the, before oh, the log. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I'm using await here, I would make, I would need to make this method. That's right. Okay, so this part is done. Let me try the app now. After Biconomy integration, okay. This has been handled. Biconomy is, Biconomy is not defined on line number 73. That's right, because we have made it a constant variable here. Let me define it here on the global scope. Cool, no shared date, fine. Okay, uh, now let me try to, this is a new code, let me try to, now, okay, okay, now before, before, before executing any transaction, I need to log in here. So when we click login, this signature uh, request comes. So this this piece of code is already handled in Pycon SDK. Uh, no, we just get the user signature. So it says like your contract wallet is being created. Please wait. Uh, so now the contract wallet creation transaction has been sent by Pycon uh, server, and now the contract is being created for this new user. Uh, let's wait for the uh, contract wallet creation should not take uh, more than 15, 20 seconds because it's on the option. 
should have made it on matic network i guess so that's okay yeah 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 so contract wallet creation successful uh, let me now try to submit this code okay it's asking again i have you know integrated by economy but it's still asking me to pay the fee and that is because we have not registered the method on the dashboard yeah because we have just registered this right but now we have we are not using native meta transaction so we have to register this method that code because now we are using this now we will not enable this because we we are using contract wallet approach we had this method we click save we go to our dapp we reload this we reload this now let's try to log in again but this time a new contract wallet should not be created because it has already been created okay now it's not created just says login successful because it's already created let me uh, do a new code transaction it should not ask yeah now it's not asking me to sign that transaction so this piece of you know uh, code is handled by byconmi sdk now it's asking the user signature these are the transaction parameters which uh, user is signing let me sign this the transaction is sent to the blockchain new code should be reflected here in the same contract very soon and now after the you know the the transaction is executed uh, i'll show you the message dot sender property this time like uh, what would be the message dot sender that eventually gets to the user contract so let to remind you again uh, let me show you this uh, diagram here so, so right now this is the transaction flow which we are following i just initiated the transaction i just signed the parameters sent it to by economy relayers by economy relayers signed send the transaction to relayer contract the signature verification happened the transaction was related to the user contract wallet which we just created and then finally it launched on the app let's see if it is sachin yeah. like yash is asking this was that erc 176 1776 for this nature yes that's right yeah uh Why is taking too much time? Option, option, option. Should I reload? Let's wait. Let's wait for some more time. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So this transaction is confirmed now. So, but still you. you you can see here you are not the owner of the code even if i did the transaction that's because the message dot sender in this in this case is not my metamask address you can also verify here this is the owner of this code d769 but my metamask address is 9 ece that's because this is the user contract wallet address so now the message dot sender would be user contract wallet address so in order to make this application work we need to change this logic also let me go here i have this state here contract wallet set contract wallet so once we uh, you know once we log in and this is the uh, user contract wallet which i get let me set here the contract wallet and in the user interface mm. let me show you the contract wallet address also and uh, it says here this is the logic which says which says you are the owner or you are not the owner so instead of selected address i would write the contract wallet address here let me and let me save it let me load the page it's all already loaded you are not the owner because we have not yet logged in to this application let me try to log in let me sign it's logged in this is the contract wallet and you can see now you are the owner of the code 
you can see this is the same address which is my smart contract wallet so the the main point is only you can uh, relay the transaction via your smart contract wallet you know uh, no one else can so all your ownership uh, all the transaction ownership would be with your smart contract wallet not not with anyone else so yeah i mean this was it yeah so you have you know now seen both approaches in the same project you know now you must be knowing the differences between both approaches uh, one approach in the native meta transaction approach you you can directly you know load up your uh, funds your uh, ownership information in this address but in the contract wallet approach the ownership information would be in your smart contract wallet address that's the main difference yeah yeah other than that like i uh, uh, want to mention one more thing mm -hmm. so yeah uh, our, our sdk is also open source our contracts smart contracts are also open source yep. so you guys are free to you know check out those repositories and free feel free to contribute yeah yeah and one more thing if you want to debug your application like what's happening in the maxa sdk uh while initializing the maxa sdk you can actually pass the debug property to true if you do that and if you reload the application all the debug logs would be printed uh, here like, like these are the uh, logs which you can see so if you log in Okay, use the login successfully. This is a smart contract wallet. When you are, uh, please enter the code. Okay, please enter the code with me. <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. So here you can see all the debug logs coming in. Like this is the this is the actual transaction data which user is signing, and this is being portrayed here by the MetaMask. Uh, you know, please sign this. You get the transaction hash. You can. you know track this transaction hash on the explorer user signature is this transaction hash so i mean you can debug the application using the debug logs here so yeah that's it and and uh, one thing more like uh, regarding the uh, code submission guidelines for the hackathon mm -hmm. so you can go to our maxa sdk repository and you can uh, we have mentioned on the like web for you website like how how you can you know fork the repo and just raise pr whatever you have made so yeah yeah and uh, to add on to that like guys like if you have any questions you can ask uh, for this um, yeah sure so if i mean this is uh, so we have shown you how you can integrate sdk on the client side but if you have some dap running on the server side you know where there would be no metamask uh there would be no client side wallets how do you send transaction from that so for that uh, i mean you can totally do with bycon sdk using that also using this send sign transaction function so this is a web3 uh, web3js already has this function you know you can uh, just call this function using bycon me sdk and uh, still the meta transaction would work on the back end but only difference would be like you would you would be having the access to a private key that is actually sending the transaction from the back end you know since there is no client wallet involved so native meta transaction approach uh, this is the code you will uh, you know uh, you have the private key you have the address you will create a raw transaction you will just call the method here uh, in case of uh, if you have inherited from eip 712 meta transaction contract this would be the execute meta transaction method uh, but if you have uh, like uh, uh going by a contract wallet approach uh like like no not contract wallet if you have enabled the you know the signature verification directly in your method you can uh, then mention your method here then again it's the similar way you you know sign that web3 transaction sign transaction you call the web3.eth.send sign transaction this is all done and by conme sdk will handle that so gasless transaction would be done in case of contract wallet approach at the back end some extra step would be there because this is the contract wallet approach you would need to have some 
signature that you know the the bicarb contract group sh should verify on chain uh, so uh, in that case you would not change anything on your smart contract on your dapp smart contract so this is the method this is the way you can you know uh, copy this code uh, you can either use the promise or use the callback going towards the configuration this is i mean you you have seen like uh, this is the format of the bicorp meets constructor one web3 provider and rest are the options web3 provider can be any web3 provider if it's portis you you can do portis or provider if it's metamask you can do this if it's any other wallet you can uh, get the provider object from there in options you can see dapp id is there api key is there uh strict mode is there let me okay if we are doing this let me show you this option also so you know uh, let me delete this that port api here and uh, now let me set the strict mode true here s t r i c t mode true let's see what happens when i call the set code method even if i have not registered the set code method on the dashboard so here uh, you can see the error message by conme strict mode is on no registered api found on the method set code please register api from the developer dashboard so if you you know strictly want to enable only the meta transactions in your api so you can do that by setting the strict mode true so it will tell you if if the api is not registered on the dashboard it would throw an error so you know you have to uh, register that api uh, on the dashboard done we reload the page and let me do some changes so you don't have to log in every time uh, once it's initialized uh if by economy dot is login uh i can just do this i get the user contract wallet address and i just uh, not show set contract wallet contract address okay let me Wait, we cannot use the wait. Okay, let me make it sync. Uh, please enter the code. By calling me user login. Okay, okay. Let me just okay. Let's debug this right here. I mean, you guys, if you guys have any questions, you can also ask. In the meantime, I am debugging this. This is the Bitcoin object. It has the is login property true. Uh, it has the login property true, so it should be true. Uh, selected address. and define okay it's actually coming inside it by con me what's the selected address i think okay i think it's the react's problem it is not able to you know uh, modify this uh, variable right away because it it Does it in an in an async process? So we have to get this from here property. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Just trying to. D 
see it again. Okay, this is the I we have got the address. I think we should be able to do this. Uh, and we should be able to do this. We have got the contract out of this now. This is my ID. Is this the same address I'm getting from the model? No, it's my ID. So this property is definitely setting to be true by me dot is login because it's the same address and when you know by uh, it reinitializes uh, it checks the local storage of the browser and it see if you, this user has already logged in before uh, usually you know sets the uh, property uh, I think we can see the message to the code. Uh, options here. Okay, anyways, like uh, this we can figure out uh, and let you guys know. Uh, we'll, we'll update update this, uh, this all the, uh, both approaches on the GitHub. You can check out the yeah. code. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll upload both approaches, right? Yep. Should we wrap up? Looks like... Uh, no, no more questions are there. Yeah. And you guys can uh, uh, like join the Discord channel, join the Telegram technical. Okay, we have a question here. So I can use my own way of recovering signature in my smart contract. Uh, the relay network will relay it regardless. I do not have to inherit by Conway's. Yeah, that's right. You can uh, write your own logic. In your smart contract, you do not have to rely on that. This. this is just keep given to you know to get you started. Uh, yeah, so you can write your own logic also. That's right. Any any more questions? Let me let me. Uh, Tarun, can you share the Discord link in the chat also so that? Sure, sure. Give me a. Second.
are also you know building this out so if you you know if you can also help us out in building this it would be great yeah because yeah. we have a idea or every idea is welcome here yeah cool cool thank you guys for joining in uh, i hope you uh, bye bye everyone great apps yeah keep building bye 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 Thanks for joining in Sachin